Please be seated. Thank you for the lovely music. Welcome to the 55th commencement of St. John's College in Santa Fe. I'm happy to celebrate with you the graduation of the class of 2022, as well as the return of members of our class of 2020. Thank you all for being with us today.
I'm Walter Sterling, the Dean of St. John's College in Santa Fe, and I welcome you all and open our proceedings on behalf of our President, Mark Roosevelt, who is unable to be with us today. Mark is so sorry not to be here. He is recovering from illness and doing well. He is here in spirit, watching our live stream, and sharing with Dorothy and Juliana the wisecracks that you all are missing out on all weekend. <laughs> we are especially excited to welcome all members of our community to the first commencement in three years for which we have been able to hold all of our traditional events. We are thrilled to be together today. Members of our board of visitors and governors, faculty, staff, families and guests, alumni, friends from our local community, and of course, all of you graduates. You made it. Let's give our graduating seniors, graduate students, and returning members from class of 2020 a first well-deserved round of applause. We will have several congratulations along the way uh, for each group, but for any students considering tossing a cap, you should wait until the very end of the ceremony, what we call technically the big congratulations. Since the class of 2020 had all of their commencement events shifted abruptly online, we have finally been able to invite them back to participate today in an in-person ceremony. And we are happy that many of you have been able to join us and to join the celebration this weekend. We also recognize and send warm greetings to members of our community joining us through our live stream, especially family members, graduate students in our low residency master's programs, and any graduating students who for other reasons could not be present. We do have a number of special guests joining us this morning. We are pleased to welcome the president-elect of the St. John's College Alumni Association, Katarina Wong, class of 1988. The St. John's Alumni Association is one of the longest standing alumni associations in the world, celebrating this year the 198th anniversary of its founding. Ms. Wong will be welcoming our new graduates to the Alumni Association as they step off the stage with the reminder that the alumni community is here for them for life. It's a life sentence for you all. You are Johnny's for life. We also extend a special welcome to members of the college's Board of Visitors and Governors joining us today, Ken Resnick and Pam Saunders Alban. Now I invite our Assistant Dean, Maggie McGinnis, to begin the presentation of awards and prizes. Hello. It is my pleasure to read the names and awards of those students who are receiving awards today. I'll begin with an award for the members of the senior class who have written the best senior essays, the Richard D. Weigel Prize. There are two students receiving this award today. For his essay, Is Man the Measure of All Things? Protagoras' Relativism in Plato's Theotetus, Ayush Tapa. And for her essay, Enter Richard Alone, Natalie Grace Walker. We have four recipients today of the Faculty Award for Sustained Academic Excellence from the Class of 2022, Portia Louise Abbott, <laughs> Madeline Joy Pugsley, Ayush Tapa, and Natalie Grace Walker. If those who are receiving awards would, would like to go ahead and preemptively gather, you're welcome to do so.
I will now read the names and essay titles of those students receiving awards for their annual essay. The first for his essay, Ajax Man Before Fire, for the freshman annual essay, Paul Randolph Darnall. My goodness. Is it because you've read the essay? Was it, was it that good? <laughs> For his first semester January freshman essay, The Meaning of Violence in the Odyssey, Balaram Das Bryant. For his sophomore enabling essay, Grieving in Augustine's Confessions, V. V. Vo. Honorable mention for her sophomore enabling essay, Flower and Fairies in the Wife of Bath's Tale, Tatum McGarrity. For his junior annual essay, How to Love the Dread of Nature, Noah Francis Mihalik, unable to attend. Honorable mention for her junior annual essay, The Grounds for Pure, Pure Mathematics and Kant's Critique of Pure Reason, Elsie Jang. We do love Kant's Critique of Pure Reason, don't we? <laughs> and of course, Ms. Jung. <laughs> for their undergraduate essays other than annual, I will read a number of recipients for this award. First, for her senior essay, Children at Play, sorry, not the senior essay, for her non-senior essay, senior essay. Children at Play, Good-Natured Seriousness in Kierkegaard's Fear and Trembling, Portia Louise Abbott. <laughs> I'll go ahead and get Mr. Lynn on deck for On Knowledge and Cause in the Natural Science, Claude Bernard's Conception of Knowledge, Mr. Avery Peter Lynn. Mr. Lynn here. Mr. Lynn appears to be unable to attend. Honorable mention goes to An Huang Van Do for the weaving of humanism in Cervantes' Don Quixote. And to Becoming Heroic, analysis of the main theme in the first movement of Beethoven's Eroica for Mark Andrew Wisman. For her Graduate Institute Liberal Arts Fall of 2022 preceptorial essay, To Articulate the Inarticulable, an Exploration of the Magnitude of Music in Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man, Amanda Dene Romero. Now we move to awards for uh, mathematical proofs, mathematical problems, things like that. Original fiction, translations, etc. Uh, that's Greek. <clears throat> for his solution to the set freshman sophomore level mathematical problem, Mark Andrew Wisman. <clears throat> for his solution to the set junior senior level mathematical problem, Avidal Chavla. For his original math proof, honorable mention goes to an alternate proof of Newton's expression of centripetal force for the ellipse to Ayush Tapa. You can just stay up here, Mr. Tapa. There's... <laughs> for her original fiction friend request, Chinasor Ozichi Ikenjoku. We have two awards for Greek translations of Sophocles' Electra, lines 86 through 120, the William A. Darkey Translation Prize, one to uh, John Richard McCombs, who's unable to attend, and the second to Mr. Ayush Tapa. <laughs> 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 
For her French translation, the William A. Darkey Translation Prize, Sung Yung Bong. Next, an award to a student from the freshman, sophomore, or junior class in recognition of originality of thought. The Philip LeCure Endowed Scholarship goes to Samuel Lucien Roy. To a deserving student to help with the continuation of work at St. John's College through the cultivation of the liberal arts of thinking, that is, aiming for and acquiring knowledge, and friendship, that is, sharing inquiry and thought joyfully and for its own sake, the Robert Nydorf Memorial Scholarship goes to two students from the class of 2024, Isabella Maria Lopez Powers <laughs> and Michael Johannes Brunner. To members of the freshman, sophomore, and junior classes, in recognition of academic achievement and constructive service to the college community, the St. John's Community Scholarship, provided by faculty, staff, and students, goes to three students. From the class of 2025, Sayam Dalal. From the class of 2024, Lillian Lea Duma. From the class of 2023, Elsie Jang. <laughs> to two members of the senior class for excellence in public speaking, the Senator Millard E. Tidings Memorial Prize. <laughs> to the senatorial David Campbell Lazaway McComsey. <laughs> and the presidential Micello Matipa. The Don Cook Student Leadership Award goes to Simran Tapa. She asked that we create an award for best dressed for her, but we thought student leadership was a good choice. <laughs> To four members of the senior class who have excelled in service to the college, the Dean's Award for College Service goes to Avidal Chavla, <laughs> Elena Clark Loomis, <laughs> Rosalind Claire McKean, <laughs> and Ms. Ghana Worku Sharu. make a good picture anyway. With it. <laughs> to the students who have most contributed to the academic support of their peers, the Assistant Dean's Award goes to three students, two of whom are unable to attend, Joseph Donald McGill and Taylor Robert Aiden Strongheart, and to Madeline Joy Pugsley.
<laughs> Once again, helping by not slowing things. <laughs> To a member of the senior class who has demonstrated achievement in the arts and literature, the Walter S. Baird Prize for her series of artworks, Reflex, Sky, Self, Zoe Jane Brady. <laughs> to a member of the senior class, who has demonstrated achievement in mathematics and science, the Walter S. Baird Prize for her project, Isolation and Study of a Mutant Strain of E. coli B, Dylan Catherine Newmeyer Michael. Two projects from St. John's College students are recipients of the Projects for Peace Grant Award from the Davis United World College Scholars Program and the Davis Foundation. The first is the Youth Peace Collective, Building Bridges from the U.S. to Israel-Palestine by Elena Ann Hochheiser. And the second, a project between the partners Bryn Frymason and Simran Tapa, Securing Peace in Bardia, Nepal, Freeing Women for Civic Engagement awarded in 2021. presented by Student Life. The first, to the senior who, by her consistent modeling of exemplary leadership, spirit, and integrity, has made an outstanding contribution to the St. John's community, an award offered by the Office of Student Life, Kate Ann Morrison. From the student events team, to the senior who, by his leadership, dedication, hard work, and goodwill, has made an outstanding contribution to the St. John's campus community, an award offered by the student events team to Alexander C. Kate, unable to attend, I believe. Yes. And lastly, the student activity award to the seniors, too, who by their leadership, enthusiasm, and devotion to the development of the St. John's community have made an outstanding contribution to the St. John's College intramural program, Samuel Albert Housley. Oh. Man, karma was quick. Did you, did you not learn the alphabet while you were at the sack? <laughs> Samuel Albert Housley. <laughs> and David Campbell, Lazaway McComsey. <laughs> I would like for us all to give a round of applause congratulating all of our award winners, but keep your hats on. We're going to sing Ece Gratum, which was written by Carl Orff. It's part of his piece, Carmina Burana. It's a piece about springtime and celebration and felt like an entirely appropriate piece for today. <laughs> Again? Well, hopefully this one works. Is it working? Yeah, I'm just okay. afraid that it won't pick you guys up. Okay. How about this? Oh, wow. <laughs> we are singing Ece Gratum. It's a piece by Carl Orff, part of Kamina Barana. 
Um, and it's about springtime and celebration, and we hope very appropriate for today. And I want to check this mic too. <laughs> Is it working? It is my distinct pleasure to welcome Annapolis President Nora Demleitner as our commencement speaker. President Demleitner is the 25th Annapolis President in the college's 325-year history and the ninth since the founding of the current program of instruction in 1937 and our first female president. Her Her appointment began in January of this year. President Demleitner, who served as Dean of the Law Schools at Hofstra University and Washington and Lee University, came to the United States from Germany in search of a small college that offered a broad liberal arts education, which stood in contrast to the large research university programs common in her home country. 
After receiving a BA in American Studies from Bates College, she received her JD from Yale and her LLM from Georgetown in International and Comparative Law. An expert on criminal justice issues, including sentencing guidelines, she has published extensively in publications that include the Stanford Law Review, National Law Journal, and the Washington Post. She was drawn to our college's rigorous practice of reasoned inquiry and dialogue as a means of getting at truth and understanding. Throughout her career, President Demleitner has exhibited the balance required to increase college access while upholding rigorous academic standards. At prior institutions, she was successful at strengthening the incoming student body academically and increasing access to the law schools for underserved students. Please join me in welcoming President Nora Demleitner. Good morning to all of you. It's truly a special honor to be invited to address the St. John's class of 2022 here in Santa Fe. Let me start with a provocative claim. College is not the best time of your life. Hopefully, you had a great time, filled with some great moments, days, semesters. But college years won't or shouldn't be the only great years in your life. There are many other great times to come, I promise you. Indeed, I'd say St. John's College failed you if your college years were the best years of your life. <laughs> college should not give you the very best years of your life, but give you some tools, intellectual tools and character building tools to equip you to navigate the world, both in the workplace and your communities. If in the long nights you struggled with Euclid or got into some hand-to-hand -hand combat with Kant, you also had some fun and made friends, so much the better. But rest assured, you'll make more friends and find happiness, success, and fulfillment over the rest of your life, too. Still, right now, life feels pretty unsettled. So here is my advice list for tomorrow and the years to come. Number one, transitions are hard every single time. You're in the middle of a transition. And in fact, this stage will soon mark your transition from student to alum. The next stage of your life awaits you. But until you found a new coffee shop, a new bike path, and permanently arrange your clothes in a new set of drawers, you'll feel unsettled. But transitions pass, and they may not be as major as you think. At least you aren't jumping universes, which seems to be the rage on the big screen these days, and especially in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> Should you be perplexed by any of these references? You've just spent too much time in the Johnny bubble. <laughs> but with the Marvel Universe uh, bringing out six new movies this summer, you can catch up. Or you can decide to wait a few years until all these other universes are out and Homer is in. <laughs> so on to number two. Now, you'll have to learn to straddle between the Johnny and the non-Johnny worlds. And this is all about translation. And good translations, as you know, aren't only about figuring out what the word means, but about capturing meaning and tone that the reader would understand. So, don't confuse a potential employer by casually mentioning that you're really good at Socratic dialogue, but instead tell them you're a great listener and communicate clearly and effectively. They get that and appreciate it. <laughs> Number three. As you dread the question, and what are you doing next, remember that it is always good to have a well-considered plan B. Now, what does well-considered mean? Let's take a look at Mr. Collins's playbook in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> you obviously have not forgotten him, though he is clearly boring compared to dashing Mr. Darcy. But here was his plan, for those of you who don't remember. When Elizabeth turns down his marriage proposal, 
he immediately asked her best friend, Charlotte, to marry him. He indeed had a plan B, but was it well considered? Asking separate people in a row to marry you sounds less like a plan B and more like sheer desperation. But he did display the wisdom of knowing when to stop pursuing plan A. And perhaps someone should have told Captain Ahab that. <laughs> Number four, some plans just don't work out. It may be a job, a love interest, a trip you planned. At the moment, it feels like a heartbreak. But some of the great books have made clear that life works in mysterious ways. The Bible is all about that. But so are Dickens, Marquess, and Toni Morrison to get you started on your next reading list. I'd credit the reason for me speaking to you here today to the curious path life takes to. Indeed, one of you bears great responsibility, but not to worry. I won't name the member of the class of 2022 here in Santa Fe who made me fall in love with St. John's. They are not to blame for today's speech. More seriously, there has truly never been better lived testimony for St. John's education than each and every one of you. All of you came here for a purpose. The curriculum intrigued you. The great books enticed you. You wanted to find yourself and others like you. And you did. Number five, don't give up on that quest. Give your life and your work purpose as you did during the last few years. Continue to question great ideas and ask about matters that move your generation. How can you use Socratic insight into justice to modify our legal system to give greater respect to victims and prevent convictions of the innocent? How can you use your finely honed skills of asking questions and listening earnestly to bring our polarized society back together. With over 300,000 acres, the largest wildfire in New Mexico's recorded history burning just over these mountains, how can we protect all living creatures and, hate and halt global climate change? Continue to use the tools you've learned at St. John's. Read, think, branch out into new disciplines, and then turn your learning into action. Share your insights with others. You can write songs and poetry about injustices. You can form volunteer groups or run for office. Your thoughts, your work, has meaning every day, and it touches others, sometimes in small ways you may never know, sometimes in large ways. And you may have already met some of your role models, Einstein and Freud, Hannah Arendt and St. Augustine, Du Bois and Abraham Lincoln. They just like you, sought to understand nature, humanity, purpose, justice, and good governance. They observed and listened. They struggled with ideas and with their own experiences. The impact is unmistakable, but so is yours. Whether you grew up in this country or not, whether you came from urban or rural areas, whatever your religious, ethnic, or racial background, you work to understand each other. And your classmates read texts differently today because of you. They ask different questions now than in freshman year because of you. You have each become more curious and more thoughtful because of others in your class. You were each other's guides, truly. You have already made a difference to each other, and you've left your imprint on St. John's. And as you leave this place, just like you did here, just like your teachers did, you will make a difference going out into the world. A St. John's education is a privilege, and with a privilege comes great responsibility. It is your responsibility to put your education to a purpose and to make a difference for all of us. And as you build your life and choose the impact you want to have, don't ever let others define you. It is Ralph Allison who said in The Invisible Man, 
Don't let those who, to quote, see only my surroundings, themselves, or figments of their imagination tell you who you are. You've shown already exemplary courage and agency in getting to know yourself while at St. John's. You've done things you thought barely possible four years ago, if you imagine them at all. You did seminar online, you read the Leviathan at Hegel, and more importantly, gleaned insights from these thinkers. You studied high-level math, you immersed yourself in lab science, and you learned to read music, and maybe even appreciate Bach. No book, no thought, will ever scare you again. No challenge will seem too big for you to tackle. You're already thought leaders. You know who you are. And that is a gift nobody can take from you. Number six, hone your value system and don't forget what you believe in. Remember, it's the values that drive your purpose in life. It is value systems that ultimately separate humans from machines, even those we now fancifully call artificial intelligence. There's a reason AI isn't called artificial soul, not in the religious, but in the metaphysical sense. AI can reason logically to some extent, but it doesn't have self-developed values or a sense of right and wrong. So in the last few years, some of the great books and ideas have challenged your beliefs and have shown you some of the challenges. Let me tell you about one. The American legal system is, as Chief Justice John Marshall said, a government of laws, not of men. Today, we would say, not of people. That promises impartiality, but also trust in the Constitution, legislative rulemaking, and the role of precedent. These are high values, important values, on which our country is based. But how did the value of precedent, of reliance on past decisions, resonate with those who believed correctly that overturning separate but equal, which the US Supreme Court had enshrined in an earlier decision, was a moral imperative? In the abstract, we all believe in equality and the rule of law. But they're not inevitable companions. The two values are not easily reconcilable, and sometimes one has to give. And you can, now you should be, the leaders in our overdue national conversations, discussions, not screaming matches or tweets about these really hard issues. You have learned to listen and to think clearly. And it is your voice that I want to hear in the decades to come as you invite others to build a better America and a more just world. And finally, number seven, don't ever forget who has your back. Look to the tutors and the staff all around you. Look to the person who sits to your right or to your left and look for the back where there are your families, your friends, your loved ones, partners, mentors, guides. These are the people who answered late night phone calls and shared junk food benches with you, who dried some of your tears and exchanged DMs. They were here for you, and they will be here for you in the future. Together, they shaped your past and allow them to accompany you into your future as well. And as you go into the world, continue to choose your company as wisely in the future as you have so far. Just like your teachers, both the great books, but also tutors and mentors, made you better people, stronger communicators, deeper and more rational thinkers. Those you choose to surround you into the future continue to help you on that life journey. If Othello had chosen friends more wisely, or Hamlet had actually listened to the right people, Shakespeare could have turned these tragedies into comedies. May your lives be complex but fulfilling, devoid of deep tragedy, filled with meaning and discovery, and an occasional splash of comedy. Onward, class of 2022, and congratulations.
All right, now we're gonna be doing Sikut Chervus, if you know it. Um, stay in your seats, just because we aren't gonna crowd over here, but you're welcome to sing it. Let the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts for the class of 2022 please rise. Assistant Dean McGinnis, the class of 2022 candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts stand before you. I, Assistant Dean of St. John's College, bear witness that these individuals, tried and true, have happily applied themselves among us to humane letters, philosophy, and eloquence, that they have passed the period of their course in our halls, that they have been called to examination in the presence of members of the college and the public, that they have abundantly proved themselves well-versed in all these studies. 
We, the dean, the assistant dean, and the tutors of St. John's College in Santa Fe, New Mexico, bear witness that these individuals, tried and true, have happily applied themselves among us to humane letters, philosophy, mathematics, science, languages, and music, and that they have passed the period of their course in our halls, that they have been called to examination in the presence of this academic community and the public, that they have abundantly proven themselves well-versed in all these studies, and finally that, in accordance with the order of the trustees, in this public session on this 21st day of May 2022, they have reached the degree of Bachelor of Arts. In witness of this, we have on this aforesaid day and year subscribed our names to these letters, which have been confirmed by the great seal of the college. By command of the visitors and governors of St. John's College, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. The candidates will come forward as the name of each is called. I won't read the names of the essays, but I encourage you to follow along in the program and speculate about the personality of each student based on <laughs> the title of their essay. Right. Portia Louise Abbott, Albany, California. David Ogo Adaogo, Makurdi, Nigeria. Congratulations. Madeline Charlotte Adams, Birmingham, Michigan. Shweta Agarwal, Sikkim Gantak, India. Sydney Ellen Ammons, Reston, Virginia. Asa Edward Anderson, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Lincoln Hayes Anthony, Dallas, Texas. Jackson Ballinger, Pleasanton, California, upon completion of requirements. <laughs> Sun Young Bung, Seoul, South Korea. <laughs> Leila Ayo Benslama McKinley, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Carl Friedrich Berner, Snohomish, Washington. <laughs> Onisha Inke Book, Puchong, Malaysia. <laughs> Zoe Jane Brady, Glenside, Pennsylvania. Peter Thomas Carroll, Madison, Indiana. Alexander C. Kate, Leander, Texas, upon completion of requirements, unable to attend. Samuel Patrick Kavnar Johnson, Houston, Texas. Avidal Chawla, Gurugram, India. Jared Robert Conahan, Taos, New Mexico. Solomon Moises Miqueas Cordova, Cedar Crest, New Mexico.
Charles John Dite, Mesa, Arizona. Kai Suyung English, Ashton, Maryland. Rowan Ryan David Foxley, Arlington, Washington. Sky Joaquin Franklin, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Chen Tong Fu, Jinwangdao, China. Jana Dorsey Fuller, Studio City, California. Isabella Guarnieri, Saratoga Springs, New York, upon completion of requirements. Sydney Elizabeth Gubernick, Los Angeles, California. David Zachary Gumberg, Valley Village, California, upon completion of requirements. Han Pham Lok Ha, Hanoi, Vietnam. Cameron Eugenia McIntyre Hines, Aspen, Colorado. Samuel Albert Housley, Annapolis, Maryland. Austin James Hutchinson, Gainesville, Georgia. Rory Quinn Vitus Johnson, Baltimore, Maryland. Noah River Ezekiel Justice, Cleveland, Ohio. Cole Thomas Robert Kruger, Bend, Oregon. Jansaya Kwachan Bolobietkitsa, Uralsk, Kazakhstan. Heshuan Li, Shenzhen, China. <laughs> Don Ping Long, Beijing, China. <laughs> Elena Clark Loomis, Santa Fe, New Mexico. David Campbell Lazaway McComsey, Newcastle, New Hampshire. <laughs> Yushuan Ma, Nanjing, China. Christian Lydia Marker, Denver, Colorado. Misselo Matipa, Lusaka, Zambia. <laughs> Rosalind Claire McKean, Portland, Oregon. <laughs> Margaret Wilson Merritt, Hallowell, Maine. Dylan Catherine Newmeyer Michael, San Francisco, California. <laughs> David Al Mikolov, Issaquah, Washington.
Michaela Ray Miller, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Sandrina Mislitschi, Chisinau, Moldova. Kate Ann Morrison, Windsor, Essex, Ontario, Canada. Jackson Ray Matthew Oakley, Grove, Oklahoma. Philomena Zelly Eleanor Palmer Campras, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Yi Pan, Jiashan, China. Sion Park, Seoul, South Korea. Yu Kyung Park, Burlington, Massachusetts. Sid Virgilius Pasquino, Denver, Colorado. Tessel Kate Peterson, Antwerp, Belgium. Valley, uh, excuse me, Madeline Joy Bugsley, Valley Village, California. <laughs> Sorry. Alana Caroline Ross, Greenbrier, Tennessee. <laughs> Elliot Rue, Santa Monica, California. Anthony G. Schuster III, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> Miskana Worku Sharu, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. <laughs> Julia Simonidis, Starksboro, Vermont. Cademan Miles Sixby, Hampton, Virginia. George Bernard Stengren, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Catherine Swift, Tucson, Arizona, unable to attend. Timothy Scott Sykes, Stevensville, Maryland. <laughs> Ayush Tapa, Kathmandu, Nepal. Simran Tapa, Kathmandu, Nepal. Yerel Tornes, Los Angeles, California. Heliotrope K. Vaughn, Dallas, Texas. Vincent Versace, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Daniel Isaiah Vigil, Las Vegas, New Mexico. <laughs> Natalie Grace Walker, Garner, North Carolina. Mei Ying Wang, Beijing, China. 
unable to attend. Desho Raphael Kish Weiner, Auburndale, Massachusetts. Christopher Young, Jr., Santa Fe, New Mexico. Esmatullah Zirak, Kabul, Afghanistan. Joseph De Leon Flores, El Paso, Texas, originally class of 2013. Remy Malin, New York, New York, originally class of 2009, unable to attend. Please join us, but keep your hats on, in celebrating this year's undergraduate class with a round of applause. Let the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Liberal Arts and Master of Arts in Eastern Classics, Class of 2022, please rise. <laughs> Associate Dean Walpin, the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts stand before you. Thank you. I, the Associate Dean for Graduate Programs in Liberal Education at St. John's College in Santa Fe, bear witness that these individuals have applied themselves among us to the programs of study in the Graduate Institute, and that they have successfully completed either the program in liberal arts or the program in Eastern Classics. We, the dean, the associate dean, and the tutors of St. John's College in Santa Fe, New Mexico, bear witness that these individuals have applied themselves among us to the program of studies in the Graduate Institute of Liberal Education that they have successfully completed their program in the liberal arts or in Eastern classics. And finally, that in this public session on this 21st day of May, 2022, they have reached the degree of Master of Arts. In witness of this, we have on this aforesaid day and year subscribed our names to these letters, which have been confirmed by the great seal of the college. By command of the Board of Visitors and Governors of St. John's College, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts. Candidates will come forward as the name of each is called. Isabel Susanna Ballin, Bronx, New York. Yeah. Constance Marie Martin, Seattle, Washington. Brittany Jean Hagar, Minot, North Dakota. Samuel McGee, Salem, Oregon. Cameron Michael Mulvey, Louisville, Kentucky. James Douglas Ray, Hinton, Oklahoma. James Reese, Pacific Grove, California. Amanda Dene Romero, Santa Fe, New Mexico.
Justin David Spain, Hopkins, Minnesota. Richard Gregory Stone, Juneau, Alaska. Unable to attend. William James Tierney II, Tucson, Arizona. Andrew Paul Ward, Denton, Texas. William Peregrine Yate, Seacliff, New York, unable to attend. Catherine Ann Zakoyan, Boulder, Colorado. Patrick Jordan Anderson, Chester, New Jersey, unable to attend. And Robert Lasker Sobel, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Please give a round of applause for all our graduates of the class of 2022. We have present with us today members of our returning class of 2020, whom we will now invite up to the stage. These individuals reached their degree of Bachelor of Arts on the 23rd of May, 2020. Some things were going on around then. And we are deeply delighted to have some of you back in person today. I, Assistant Dean of St. John's College in Santa Fe, bear witness that these individuals, tried and true, have happily applied themselves among us to humane letters philosophy and eloquence, that they have passed the period of their course in our halls, that they have been called to examination in the presence of members of the college and the public, that they have abundantly proved themselves well-versed in all these studies. We, the Dean, the Assistant Dean, and the tutors of St. John's College in Santa Fe, New Mexico, bear witness that these individuals, tried and true, have happily applied themselves among us to humane letters, philosophy, mathematics, science, languages, and music, that they have passed the period of their course in our halls, that, that, that they have been called to examination in the presence of this academic community and the public, that they have abundantly proven themselves well-versed in all these studies, and finally, that in accordance with the order of the trustees in the public session on the 23rd day of May, 2020, they reached the degree of Bachelor of Arts. In witness of this, we have on this aforesaid day and year subscribed our names to these letters, which have been confirmed by the great seal of the college. Shannon James Lynch Albritton. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Welcome back. Can't believe you guys are up here. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome. Nico Angel Gargiulo. <laughs> Emily Marie Axelberg. <laughs> Matthew Jordan Beck. Leah Hushka Caminetta. Caminite, Caminite, sorry. Isabella Robin Copeland. Billy Fabricant. Emilio Freeman. Yeah. 
Israel Gallegos. Elizabeth Joy Grayson. Nicholas Kane Hobson. Tato Sasana Halema. William Redpath Cuppets. Yuki Kwan. Hao Luo. Sadie Hope McDonald. Luis Fernando Melgar Arias, not able to attend. <laughs> I know that's not you. <laughs> Claire Sophia Motzinger. Patrick Alexander Murray. Douglas John Roland Spurlock. John Henry Stewart. Nope. Sorry. I just read the list, folks. Gregory Alexander Sosoyev. Rachel Janine Taylor. William Hunter Winkle Thompson. <laughs> Cleo Ulatowski. Noah Miller Waldron. Emily Jean Weezer. Bridget Young Wu. <laughs> Did I pronounce it wrong? <laughs> Wayani Young. Let us celebrate now together, and again, keep your hats on, the entire undergraduate class of 2020, those who could be with us and those who are not, with a round of applause. As well, we have present members of our, uh, the returning class of the Graduate Institute uh, class of 2020, who we will now invite up to the stage. These individuals reached the, the degree of Master of Arts in Liberal Arts on the 23rd of May, 2020. I, the Associate Dean for Graduate Programs in Liberal Education of St. John's College in Santa Fe, bear witness that these individuals have applied themselves among us to the programs of study in the Graduate Institute and that they have successfully completed the program in liberal arts. We, the Dean, the Associate Dean, and the tutors of St. John's College in Santa Fe, New Mexico, bear witness that these individuals have applied themselves among us to the program of study in the Graduate Institute of Liberal Education, that they have successfully completed their program in the liberal arts, and finally, that in the public session on the 23rd day of May, 2020, they reached the degree of Master of Arts. In witness of this, we have, on this aforesaid day and year, subscribed our names to these letters, which have been confirmed by the great seal of the college. Kelsey Jean Hennigan. James Charles William Jennings. <laughs> and
and Devin Martin Ketch. Can we have a round of applause for these and all the graduate institute graduates of the class of 2020? Thank you, President Demleitner. We are grateful for your presence this weekend, for your leadership, and especially for the words and reflections you shared with us. And we look forward to having you here again many times in the years to come. Before closing, our President Mark Roosevelt reminded me to share a word of wisdom he seeks to impart to our graduates. Some people will tell you that it's not what you know, but who you know that really matters in life. But you have attended St. John's College and you know better than that. It is whom you know <laughs> that really matters in life. With that, I have fulfilled my promise to borrow at least once today from Mr. Roosevelt's wit and wisdom. In a moment, we will conclude our ceremony please allow the faculty procession to exit before adjourning from your seats, and please feel free to join us for the picnic lunch on the field and to enjoy campus for as long as you wish to today. Now, finally, to all of our graduates, 2020 and 2022, seniors and graduate students, will all of you please join me in offering a big, final, joyful, Congratulations. Thank <laughs> you.